And hello once again. This is Late Night Parents. Happy to be here. Uh, full house tonight. Best ways to get in contact with us, latenightparents.com. My name is Ted Hicks. Um, we do this with the best team that we know on the planet. We'll go around the room because we have a special guest in studio. We have a special guest online. So, um, Dr. Michelle, how you doing? I'm doing great. How's everyone doing, too? I am doing well, Dr. Michelle. How are you? Good. And, of course, I have to give it the Teddy Ted. Richie V <laughs> is in the building. Dr. Michelle is in the building. <clears throat> Our special guest studio, um, I guess, you know, superstar. Yes, guest. absolutely. <laughs> David Dean is in the building. A pleasure. Happy to have you here. Um, we're going to get to David and the second part of our show, but on the line here, and before we even get started, um, we lost a couple of legends. Yep. Jerry Lewis, Dick Gregory, comedians, but also Dick Gregory, the community activist. Major social activist. And then, of course, all the things that Jerry Lewis did with the telethons over the how many years was he doing that? I mean, four or five decades? I lost count, as long as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a sad day in comedy or for comedy. Yeah, it really is. So, along with that, on the line, we have a special guest. His name is Michael Daniels. Um, Michael might not be a household name, but his app, Fair spelled F-A-Y-R is something that we're going to get to know because it's a groundbreaking app for divorced parents. Why? Because it was featured in the Apple reality series Planet of the Apps. Okay. So it's available. The first originally scripted show on Apple Music. Um, Michael Daniels is the groundbreaking app that simplifies everyday matters for divorced parents and it was recently featured on the July 25th episode of the Apple Reality Tech Series Planet of the Apps and secured um award excuse me Academy Award winning actress and su successful entrepreneur Gwyneth Paltrow as a mentor slash advisor so with that we'd like to introduce Michael Daniels Michael how you doing I'm doing great everyone thanks for having me very much it's uh, an honor to be here welcome wonderful wonderful so i guess michael as, as i stated before um offline want to thank your your pr group we kind of slugged through a couple of things to get you scheduled i know you are high in demand so we won't take up too much of your time um if you could tell us what inspired you to develop the, the fair app you know honestly uh, i think a lot of people could relate to my experience. I don't think there's anything unique about my experience, uh, but I just chose to try to find a better way to do it. I've been divorced for eight years, and, uh, you know, the family courts are backed up anywhere between one and three years in some counties. Mine took two years, and during those two years, it was the painstaking uh, chores of having to reconcile with logs every night for time sharing while you're waiting for... Um, a, a judgment by by the judge as far as what it's going to be and so during that two years you're having to save receipts you know, doctor visits dentist visits bank statements insurance statements you're having to again reconcile these laws comb through text messages screenshot and put them on you know you have to print them out uh, then you have to give them to your lawyer's office and the paralegal then charges you 125 dollars an hour to put them to photocopy them and put them in a court ready document and it, it's just all of the escalating things that happen really because of, you know, miscommunication, uh, disagreements, and this sort of thing. And I just felt like, you know, if there were four features that could exist in one app for two people to use, because let's, let's face it, you know, there's no other area of life that you are in a civil lawsuit with another human being and you have to communicate with them daily. There's just no other area of life right. like this. And so uh, I put together these four features and... And they are um, a simple time-sharing calendar, but it really clears the, the air, uh, the, the way it works. You 
know, it's color coded. Mom has one day, dad has another day, uh, the another color days, and uh, you just simply click on your day. And if you choose to forfeit the day or trade a day, it's easily done. They immediately get text messages to their phone, uh, seeing the request. And if you accept it, it switches to your color. And at any time, you can print, a, a, export a PDF report. And it's all there. You don't have to worry about even going to uh, a lawyer to have these things uh, put to, to be put in this court-ready format. So then the expense tracker is another one. Again, all expenses are very clear. People are great about keeping a, a mental inventory of their own contributions, but so, so seldomly are, do they really think about the contributions being made by the other person. Well, this keeps track of all of that in a very easy-to-see pie chart as well as you can scroll year-to-date of uh, since, since uh, inception, as well as each month. And then I call it admissible messaging because lawyers always tell you to communicate via email because emails are admissible in court and text messages are not. Uh, but with this, you have the ease of text messaging with the admissibility of emails. Um, and then the, the last one is geo pinpoints because I can't tell you how many times you have these court ordered uh, time sharing schedules and you show up within your two hour window. But let's say the other person's not there. And then you turn around and go home. Well, there's no proof that you were there. Well, with this, you show up, you drop your geo pinpoint, you know, uh, uh, in the log, and the other person gets the, the notification immediately, showing them that you're there. There you are on the planet right now. And there's just it's indisputable, incontestable, and really mitigates a lot of the problems that flare up, escalate into costly things. So let's face it, you know, um, our, our money. <laughs> Is, is much better spent on more noble purposes, like on our children, than it is to be wasted uh, the way it's being wasted in our country. I mean, 60 million people, and um, I, I would just like to I'd just like to see people be able to be the best versions of themselves and not live with the anxiety and the time and money spent. So, so that that's extremely interesting. I mean, it sounds like you developed and found this app as the answer to uh, a problem, which obviously you, you yourself and many other people have identified. So since you've done this with the app, you've created the, the app that answers all these questions, solves these problems, how, how has your life changed since you developed the app? Well, I have to tell you, um, well, I mean, I developed the app one year ago as in I started it. It, it hasn't, we were beta testing by February, um, by the time I finished uh, filming uh, Planet of the Apps. And we, we did a soft launch just uh, right after our, well, before the show, we were doing a soft launch, still more testing, because I knew I was going to, you know, I was going to be featured in the App Store, which got me 27 million hits, which was crazy. Mm. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it was going to be properly stress tested, no, no crashes. So um, my, my life has changed in that, you know, I feel very comfortable. I sleep well at night now. I don't worry about my five minutes in front of a judge, if things flare up. I don't worry about it anymore because I know everything is documented. It can't be challenged anymore because I can't tell you how frustrating it is when you keep a detailed log uh, on this legal yellow pad of paper and you show up in court and you say, here it is. And they say, no, he made that up. And truly, anybody could make it up. I mean, that's just, to be fair, anybody could. So I, I feel great these days. I, I honestly, um, and I find that just mitigates a lot of our problems because it's there for both parents to see. And then, you don't have the misunderstandings or just the uh, just the disagreements anymore. So I have two questions for you because it sounds mm -hmm. like it's something that's been very beneficial to you. What mm -hmm. type of feedback are you getting from the users? And then how does that feedback translate in, into what is next for your app? Yeah, well, those are. I'm glad you asked both those questions. My, I have some users here uh, locally. I live in Western Florida, and and these and these pe these people treat. I find that some users find some features more beneficial to them than others, uh, given their circumstances. Some people are not resp responsible for a 50/50 financial split. Some people are. So for those people, it's more the time sharing calendar that they don't have to. So many things get slipped in the cracks when you're just communicating on your iOS text messages and you can't remember, was I supposed to be there on Tuesday or Wednesday at 3.30 or which day was 4.25? And you, things get really mixed up. But with this, you're able to schedule special events, your time sharing, you're able to put in your notes. I mean, it's, 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 you can be as macro level or as micro level as you want to with it. So I find that they are very uh, happy to be using the app, um, whatever feature they really need it their specific needs 
And as far as how the show, there's so many platforms I'm building out that Gwyneth, frankly, she and I, she actually messaged me this morning. Um, as a matter of fact, we she's been great because she gives it a very human element where she kind of <laughs> she reproached me and said, you know, there's a lot of againstness in this, and it's true because I came at this from a position of I, I'm sick of wasting nearly sixty thousand dollars in legal fees, and I, I wanted to find a way to, to to stop that. I mean, eight years later, and I'm still in these things. So, so um, yeah, I came at it from a different point of view. But what she's introducing to the app is. Uh, something that promotes more harmony, such as when you receive a message within the app from your ex notifying you about something that they've shown up on time for. They can geo-pinpoint, I just show up to soccer practice, we're here. If you respond within 10 minutes with one of the preset auto-responses that you can select and send, that saying, hey, good job, or hey, you know, thank you, or something like this, if you do it in a timely fashion, don't leave them out there hang- hanging, by by doing that, there's something called your fair score. It's kind of like your credit score. It goes it goes up. So you're able to see your analytics at the end of the month. Will show you, hey, this month, you know, you did great. You you were fifty fifty in your time sharing. You spent you know you spent this much money on your kids, and you showed up on time to all these events, and you responded positively to your ex. So it causes that healing to occur. And that's something that Gwyneth really is big on. She she actually does a phenomenal job. She says that she and her ex have the best relationship they've ever had. And, um, and, and so that's one thing that she's doing. The other one we're doing is it's called fair planning. Most people don't know this, but 68% of parents either have no life insurance for their kids or less than $100,000 in life insurance. And, uh, you know, as we all know that the loss of a parent in a child's life is a whole lot more than $100,000 over the course of that, that child's life. And so um, we're going to offer a way that while you're spending money you're rounding up to the nearest dollar just to change and this this money is going into paying for life insurance premiums or even uh, prepaid educational funds for your kids that are tax deferred um, and your both parents are, are, are saving up for these things because unfortunately kids from broken homes are far less likely to have these sort of things in existence for them um, so that's another thing and then we're also talking about fair parenting tutorials that um, when kids reach a certain age, these different periods in their lives, for instance, the terrible twos everybody talks about, is it really the terrible twos or are they just becoming self-aware? Is that the age that they start to explore their, their world? And it's how we relate to them. We want to maximize that opportunity in their lives and our effectiveness as a parent. So we're going to have uh, these fair parenting tutorials within the app, it's kind of like continuing education for the kind of parent you are at each specific uh, stage of their life. And there'll be like a little five question retention quiz and if you and again if you answer it all and you pass the quiz again your fair score goes up and uh, so it's, it's just about you know to make things better and then the last thing that she helped me with was the idea we're gonna do fair deals so within the app you'll have a whole slew of things to help these families these that are two two income two separate home families save a lot of money for using fair they use fair and they have in-app discounts at all kind of popular places you take your kids to play, take your kids to eat, or you just take your kids to, to learn. I don't, you know, it could be publishers, uh, books, all kind, of, uh, all kind of companies are going to advertise uh, their, their, their coupons that will be with you at all times. You don't have to worry about did I bring it or not. Michael, this is Ted. Um, I have a friend, uh, Rich and I have a friend who lives in North Carolina in the Raleigh-Durham area. <coughs> area that could really utilize this application. So what we would know, need to know is how would we go about purchasing this app? What platforms are, are it, you know, currently available on? And kinda... right. Well, I'm sorry, did you go ahead and finish? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay, yeah, currently I'm only in iOS, so it's only available for Apple, but it, it will be in Android uh, by October. So um, I, I, I apologize for that. It's just development takes a long time. Um, I'm, it's a um, it's an annual subscription now of forty nine uh, ninety nine a, a year a year. So um, comes out to about a little over four dollars four dollars and twelve cents a month. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's it's spelled again F A Y R. The acronym stands obviously it's about being fair, but it's family advocacy is your responsibility. Mm. F A Y R. Okay. Gotcha. That's and. Nice. What's the best ways to follow you on social media? So any of our listeners 
yeah, after, yeah, after the I'm, session, I'm, they want to reach out to you or they want to reach out, learn yeah, more about the company? Do. Oh, please do. And uh, again, I'm on uh, www.fair.com and, um, and on, on, see, on Twitter, I'm, I'm Fair Dad. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram, it's Be Fair. Um, and uh, yeah, please reach out to me. I'm, I'm, I'm so open to, I read every one of my customers' uh, emails that they send in. If you have any suggestions on how to make the app better, I, am, I love them. I, I, I listen to everyone and I implement it when I hear it. Michael, we want to thank you for this segment and joining our show, taking a few minutes out. And hopefully in the you know next couple of months, we'll touch base again to find out you know what's next for the FAIR app. I, I appreciate it. Thank you all very much for having me. Well, thank you for coming on with us. Thank you, Michael. It's been a pleasure. Right. Have a great evening, everyone. You Bye. too. That was pretty cool. I, I like what it. it stands for. Yes. Yeah. Because I was curious. I was like going on the website, looking it up. I'd be curious to know what the uh, legal community has had to say about it. Ah. Okay. We'll get them next time. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get them next time. Or, we'll log in, download the app. I'll give it a go for a subscription. And, or, or, um, or we'll give it to our friend. Or we'll give it to our friend. <laughs> our mutual friend. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Something that I had to slip in. but And guess what? In the process of coming to the show, I forgot uh, it. Oh, no. Yeah, because you guys didn't know I have um, foot problems. Oh, no. Yeah, I do. Well... Really, just for this read, I have these foot problems. <laughs> but um, <laughs> trying to get around that truth and advertising kind of thing. Fake so, news. I don't know. Fake, fake commercials. News. Mm-hmm. Fake news. I mean, mm-hmm. did you know that our feet make up about twenty five percent of all bones in our body? Yes. Twenty six bones in each feet, thirty three joints, one hundred seven ligaments. Doctor Michelle knows all of this already. This way, I would say she should be reading this. I, she should. <laughs> He's reading. It's all memorized. <laughs> You already know it. How many bones? <laughs> How many bones? A whole bunch, and you better be careful that you don't break one. That's true. And that being said, our feet need a break, especially if you're suffering from foot pain or arthritis. Okay. Rich, I don't know about you, but that commute, going from train to to car to train to <laughs> railroad, back to train. How many back steps to- do you actually walk, though? Seriously. Uh it's no, 5, not 000. today. Yeah. I'm talking about in general with work, commuting work, to work. About 5,000. Um, just during the course of the day normally? The entire work day? Not including uh. exercise. You're just talking about just to and from. You're exercising? Yes. Since when? You just yes. went there again. Oh, you didn't know. When did you start? I, it's been ongoing. <laughs> I'm since out. April? Since I'm we did the fitness yes. log? Since we I'm did the fitness log. Rich is still checking. He's still I'm checking. I'm going to stay out of we it. We do. So, this over 10,000 today. Over 10,000. Today's not a work day. And I've done about six, six to 7,000 a work day. Okay. Oh, okay. But how much in regards to two and just from? The walk, just the walk back and forth, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to say because it's only four city blocks from train station to office and from car to train. It's like 100 steps. <laughs> Stop. See, you just burst his bubble. Look at For that. me. Stop. For me. For you. Because you, right. you're taking shortcuts and everything else like that. I park. I walk down two flights of stairs. <laughs> I walk up one flight of stairs. I'm at the train. Our good friends at Fuzuku, <laughs> <laughs> the pain relieving reflexology mat, it gives you pain relief on an overall pressure. Here's how Fuzuku can help you step into relief over 2800 reflexology points help temporary relief pain associated with plantar fasciitis heels arches and foot tingling massages your heel arch pad and toes sends pain relieving signals while massaging nice for all other information go to our friends at f-u-t-z-u-k I dot com. So I have a but question. Zuki. Did you get a sample, Matt? I did. And that's why I said I forgot it because I was supposed to bring it in so I can do this quick, you know what, and then show it to you guys and then you guys can put your feet on it and like stuff like that. But I left my phone. I couldn't find my phone. I couldn't do this. And I kind of got out of whack. So 
along with that, no foot zuki for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it. That means he's going to keep all. it. That's okay. He deserves it. I think he's got the biggest feet out of all of us, so that's okay. You know, so See, with I this, didn't say anything. I'm not. That's it's not okay. a. That's not a bad a, thing. No, it's not a bad thing. You know, but um, along with that, this is late night parents with Dr. Michelle, Richie V. I'm Ted, and we have a special in studio guest, Mr. David Dean. He's in the building. Before Rich gives the. He does his monologue. I want to tell you, <laughs> David, Rich told me about you a couple of years ago. Yeah. I wanted to get you on the show a couple of years ago. Do you yes, remember? I, yeah. It was around about 2015. Wow. And Rich said, you know what? You're just too busy. So I understand <laughs> that with everything. So it's a blessing that you are here. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah, great to be I'm, here. I'm happy about it, too. He's all over the world. So, yes. you know, we just got lucky here. His sister's all over the world now, so he's got a cover. I'm watching That's mom. A, okay. Aww. Mom yeah. sitting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Not at all. Yeah, so we, we've known each other for, I guess we, we technically met when we were about three and okay. started hanging out close when we were about 12. Oh. Yeah. So this is my brother. <laughs> Ever since. All right. Yeah. 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 So, yes, I have a monologue here because I have to give him the proper introduction. Oh, boy. Because he's done so much. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. You know. So if you've watched TV at all over the last 30 years, you've seen Dave's work. From the heyday of music videos to the present, working directly with artists like Janet Jackson, Jennifer Lopez, Snoop Dogg, and Usher, just to name a few. Uh, major commercial projects like the Apple and the Mac PC campaign, uh, the Big Five Gum campaign, the Allstate Insurance campaign, uh, every major automotive manufacturer. He's a Directors Guild of America award winner. He's also one of the most respected first assistant directors in Hollywood. And he's now developing his own project, which he's called Set Vets. And the purpose of this project is to assist veterans in learning about and gaining employment in the entertainment production industry. So, David, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice introduction. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All des- well deserved, and it's all true. Mostly true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I left out a few things. Uh, so, I know some of it, but again, you've been in the business for like 30 years now. Yeah. So, tell, tell our listeners and our co hosts here how you got started. Well, it's funny, you know, I, I'm one of the rare people you'll find in the film industry that I, as a child, kind of identified that's what I wanted to do for a living. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew I wanted to work in, in Hollywood and TV and film production. And I found my way into it when I was about in my early 20s, worked my way from the very, pretty much the very bottom to what I'm doing now. And during the all the ensuing years there are people you run into and you can just see a look in their eye and people always come to you on the street when you're on a, on a film set and they say oh man I always wanted to do that oh how, how can I get into it and you can almost look at them and see no you don't right. you could 14, 15, 16 hour days you know standing out in the rain under a bridge someplace you know right. but sometimes when people say it you look at them and you know they really do want it you know mm-hmm. And uh, 2007, I was doing an Army campaign down at Fort Hood, Texas. Mm. And I have no military experience myself. But the film community for decades has pretty much modeled film production methods and methodologies from the, from the military. It's the same basic idea. You take a group of 150 people or 200 people or 60 people or whatever it happens to be. You move into a place. You establish a perimeter. You set up a base camp. You get what you have to get done, you pack it up, and you get out of there. And you try and leave it the way you found it, mm-hmm. you know. So during this time down at Fort Hood, I was introduced by the colonel who was sort of overseeing our production. He brought this guy to me, a, st- a staff sergeant. He said, this is Staff Sergeant Dameron. He's going to be your liaison for the time that you're here. Anything that you need, you want the guys to do something, you tell him. He'll translate it to military speak, and he'll get it done. Okay, great. Dameron and I started talking, and every time he'd finish a sentence, he'd say, if I asked him a question, he'd say, yes, sir, yes, sir, no, mm-hmm. sir, yes, sir. And I was like, look, dude, you got to cut out the sirs, you know? And he's like, you're not in a uniform, 
but I can tell you're a captain. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he would walk up to me and he would say, like, you know, you treat your privates a lot better than I treat mine. <laughs> I was like, those, the similarities in the structure of a film crew and the structure of a military organization are very, very similar. Right. Minus, you know, the weaponry or whatever, but it's the very similar thing. We have departments and everything else. So by the time I finished my seven days working with these guys, I was like, when you got, they were getting ready to go to Afghanistan. This is 2007. These guys were gearing up to go to Afghanistan. And I said to him, he said, when you guys get back, man, you know, if you want to get into this thing, mm-hmm. call me because you could do this in your sleep. Oh, you wow. know? He was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we exchanged emails and whatnot. I, you know, I emailed him two or three times over the next couple of months, never heard back from him, but I figured the guy is busy, right? Mm-hmm. He's taking his squad to a, to a foreign country in, into theater. And about seven years later, mm-hmm. well, before I get to seven years later, during that time, you know, we started seeing everything that was happening with the current recession, with the recession that was 2007, 8, 9, right. mm-hmm. then a lot of the news uh, reports on veterans coming home and not being able to find mm-hmm. adequate work, right. and then the VA having issues with the mm-hmm. VA hospitals. And, th- and I was just really kind of incensed because during my time at Fort Hood, Man, I saw every single kind of person you could imagine. I saw women, you know, men, you know, Asian, white, you know, Jewish, whatever, Latino, people of every color, stripe, creed, ethnicity, whatever, doing every kind of job you can imagine, right. you know? I mean, majors who were like women that were five feet tall mm-hmm. and the guys walking by snapping to a salute, you know? So I just sort of figured... I should start a program because I don't know much, but I know film. I know how to make a film. I know a film set. These guys could do this in their sleep. I should make a program. And there's been programs for other groups to help other groups assist uh, to diversify the film industry. I was like, I should do it for these guys too, you know. Mm -hmm. So seven years later, I get an email, and it's from the sergeant. And he's like, I'm back. And I'm like, oh, seven years later, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> How you, you been? Paul. How you been, you know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you said Paul. And he was keeping in contact. Yeah, yeah, he was. I just heard from him the other day. He was like, I'm back. And he was like, you know, give me a call to get a chance. So I gave him a call. We got on the phone. And he just said, look, you know, working on those commercials with you guys was the proudest my guys ever were, man. They were they were celebrities in Afghanistan right. because the commercials got a lot of airtime. And they were like, man, they would walk across the base and people would call them Hollywood, you know. <laughs> and I knew a couple of his guys because, you know, we hung out a little bit when we were in Texas. And I was like, oh, how's Kunto or how's, you know, how's so-and-so? Okay. And some of them was like, yeah, he's not doing too well. He can't find work. And one guy, he said to me, yeah, he, you know, he didn't come home. Wow. And I, mm. it just became real for me in a way that that, I know that's a lot of people dealt with that over and over and over again, but it just made it real for me in a way mm-hmm. that I just had never experienced. So I told him about the idea for the project, and he was like, yeah, you should do it. You should do it. I'll help you. I'll do whatever I can to help you. And I just went to different production companies in Hollywood, and I, I found a guy at the VA in L.A. who could who, whose job was to help the guys find employment, right. the unemployment office. And I got this guy to set up interviews with me with c- people that he thought would be adequate candidates, you know, mm-hmm. good candidates. And we interviewed 30 people to fill a, a class of 10. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to do a class of 10 to start off. And we got about eight guys, and we interviewed them, and then we did a three-day training course with them. Where we just, Basically, it's not teaching them hardly anything. It's just a translation. Okay. It's just from one language to another, you know. Mm-hmm. And they then I bring them on my jobs to start and then I sort of feed them out to other ADs and other production companies and other right. and these guys love it they right. love it and the, the hard part is that I have to tell them you might have been a sergeant and you might have been a corporal you might have been whatever but you're starting off back at the bottom you're private this again <laughs> you're private again <laughs> and are you willing to do that right because, because the thing is I'm bringing you in in the entry level position of a production assistant right and that's a gopher, essentially, mm-hmm. you know. There's no special skill set for it. Mm-hmm. All it is is hustle and grind, you okay. know. If you can hustle and grind for 14 hours, you can be a great PA and, and keep your keep your mind straight, keep your, your eye on the prize. And a lot of these guys were like, yeah, let's do it. And they, they're they not afraid of 3 o'clock in the morning, be at work. Right. 
They're not afraid of like you know, got to sit here for an hour and wait for that. Mm-hmm. They don't. That's nothing to them. Right. You know? They, they, they were living in the desert in the dirt, yeah. sitting there for twenty four hours like, a day. You know, this is nothing. Right? We were out a couple of weeks ago, one hundred and ten degrees out in Lancaster, California, <laughs> and my guy, who was one of my set vets, Richard, he said to me, he's like, "You look hot." I was like, yeah, I'm hot, man." <laughs> He said, this isn't hot. <laughs> this is not hot. <laughs> Try 132, you know. I was like, Ooh. wow. You know, but they love it. Right. And so what I'm trying to do now is, like, build it in Los Angeles and as a proof of concept. Mm-hmm. But then the reality is that you've got veterans returning to the Atlanta area, mm-hmm. right. New York area, right. Texas, Louisiana, Chicago. And all of those places, the cities I just mentioned, they're all film hubs. Right. They all have vibrant right. film communities. Mm-hmm. So it could happen in all those places as well. Yeah. So, go ahead. I was going to say, so it sounds like an, an amazing program that you're offering. And how many vets have you actually been able to, I guess, go through the program mm-hmm. and then hear from and see where they're going now? We've done positions? about 11 so far. Mm. And well, one got sick and didn't finish the program, so we've done ten. Mm-hmm. And I'd say six of them, six of the ten, are working on their own, you know, without my help. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And the thing is that that's the thing. It's like once you, the whole thing about the film community is you have to know somebody. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's brain surgery, but you have to know somebody because I didn't know how to get into it. Yet you you somebody has to introduce you into the into the game. So that's what I'm, pro- I'm providing is if I can show you not just how to be a PA, but how to be a ninja PA, like impress everyone when you walk on set. And people are like, who's that guy? Who's that woman? You mm-hmm. know, I told them how to how to show up and show up on a, on a day of work like that. Their names go around like like wildfire because mm-hmm. everyone wants a good PA. It's the mm-hmm. cheapest position to fill mm-hmm. on a film set, but it's the hardest to find good, consistent talent. Right. You know. that they're the grunts, so they're really what's making everything happen yeah, in the they background. Are. They are moving everything they around, are. making they everything are. happen. And okay, so that makes total sense. And it's, it makes me so proud. People come to me on, on the crew, and they go like, "Who's that guy? Right, one like, of my guys. How long? How long has he been doing this?" And I'm like, <laughs> "This is his third hour." Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Oh my god, can I borrow him? Can I borrow him? Can I borrow that guy?" I'm like, "Yeah." You can, you know. So, how's the support been from the film community then? It's been really good. I know that's tough. It's tough because I'm still on the grind myself. You know, mm-hmm. I'm still a working AD. I'm not, I can't just sit around and just do this. So mm-hmm. it's, it's hard for me to find the balance. I'm trying to get additional people to help me with the administrative aspect of it. But um, the film community, like, I think like everyone, they have great intentions. Mm-hmm. But if you're not there to say, well, where's the check? Or where's the job? Or where's the this? People sort of like, they mean well, but they don't necessarily follow through all the time, unless right. you, unless you follow through and help them follow through. Mm-hmm. So that's difficult, and I have you know. But the thing is, once these guys get in, s- some of my guys I can't even hire anymore because they're not available. It's wow. impossible to find. You know, that's the, good. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want to have happen. You know. So I want to do another class. I'm going to try and do another class this fall. It doesn't cost a lot to do it, but mm-hmm. it does cost something. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do another class this fall, and then I just want to do two to three classes a year Mm -hmm. because basically it takes – if I get ten people in in the fall, it takes about six months for them to just get enough traction Mm -hmm. where they're just – I've gone through all ten, and they're just out there, out of the nest, flying free. Right, right. And then I can mix another ten, you know, in the spring, you know. Mm And all, all the while, the name is building and people learning that, oh, these guys are out of setbacks, and they're awesome. Right, 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 yeah. And you know it's funny because I initially, because I again I'm not I'm not in the military, never served. I was like you know that they're not making it all militaristic all and right. making the program all militaristic. And a lot of the guys were like, yeah, you know, done with that, right? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> did that? That's right. Did that, and brother? Not trying right. to go back either. Don't need right, to. Right. Don't need to make, really make it up all that. Right. You know, I'm trying to move on. So I still use the name, but mm-hmm. I don't beat it over the head with the you know the fact that they're military. And a matter of fact, right. a lot of times I bring them on sets and I don't tell people at first. Right. And then they're like, who's that dude? You know, and I'm like, yeah. Although they hear about the program. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, you know, that guy is one. No, you know, okay. he's one of like our guys. They love it, you know. I do have one question for you. Sure. Because I know the show is only 60 minutes. Oh, this, yeah, we can. Right. I, and I know we can go on for days. Yeah. So, since we have 
I guess I'm looking for the abridged version from you, Dave. So yeah. I'm putting you on the spot, okay? Sure. You ready for this, right? I'm, I'm ready. You ready, Doc? Here yeah. it goes. Okay. It's going to be something good. I can, okay. uh, I can feel uh, this coming. <laughs> so I've never served in the military. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm interested in getting into the business. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to be a PA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to be an assistant director. Give me the abridged version. What do I need to do? Be a PA. Sorry. You still have to start at the bottom. No, I'm, ah. I'm just telling you, there's no way. There's like this to get to my union, right? Okay. You need to be to get into my union as my assistant. Mm-hmm. You have to have 600 days of PA. Okay. To get into my union, right? almost like an apprenticeship. It, well, um, it's not. It yeah, is, it is an of, apprenticeship. Yeah. I have people that I work with, and they're like, they need to make that more. That's not enough. Right. It's not enough. Or actually. 600 days is enough to be a second AD, but then once you're a second AD, which is my assistant, Mm -hmm. you only need to do 150 days to qualify as a first. And people are like, that's insane. Because basically my job Mm -hmm. is I'm the assistant coach. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Belichick sitting there, but he's he knows some of the minutia, but not all the Mm minutia. I'm the assistant coach who has Mm -hmm. to deal with all the minutia of everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And that, and I'm everyone's assistant. I'm the director's assistant on paper, but I'm the makeup artist's assistant. I'm the caterer's assistant. I'm the actor's assistant. I'm everyone's assistant. Okay. You know? And so there's no way that you could ever get that knowledge unless you are on set in some capacity. For instance, I didn't go through a second AD route. Okay. I was an electrician. Okay. Uh, I was a PA, then I gripped, and then I was an electrician. So I was on sets around camera and on sets every day. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't in the production aspect of it. So when I made the transition to being an AD, I used my knowledge of, okay, the DP is trying to do this, talk to the key grip. I heard, I heard that conversation. That's going to be 20 minutes. That's going to be half an hour. Okay. You know, and so I used that to sort of lean on as I learned the other aspect of the game. Okay. But you'd have to be on set for years to right. be an AD. So is it safe to say 1,300 hours I can – Become an AD. Thirteen hundred hours. Uh, well, well, days. 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 Thirteen hundred days. Days. <laughs> days. <laughs> days. Not hours. You know, I'm not saying that you, you can, are really trying to. I'm do not the saying. Program. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm I, trying to fast track. I'm talking it's about a production with over a crew, a crew of over twenty people. Okay. If and you were, if you were going to do something and it was just like a camera, a host, and and three people, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you could be an AD. Okay. If you you know if you knew the basics, but it's hard to you could never step onto a set if somebody hired you to do something else right. it would be next week yeah. I officially <laughs> become the AD here <laughs> I just want to let you guys know uh, okay <laughs> well, I'm the uh, I'm the DP yes yes I'm also are. the sound engineer right. yes, yes. Uh, the, the assistant sound engineer we have Brian for sound engineer mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and I'm the main host yes, right. yes. <laughs> the talent no no you're, that's called the talent you're, talent. you're the She's talent the brains we, of the operation we, we call you first team that's what <laughs> okay. we call you bring in first team there we go <laughs> Can't get any better. Do you have any stories of your set of it, guys, that you'd be willing to share? Um, or able to share? Uh, yeah, I do have one. So one of the things that we tip, you know, it's not just about the mechanics of the job. It's also about the politics of the job. Okay. Right? And the, I always say to people, I'm, I'm providing a service, but it's also I'm providing a brand. You mm-hmm. know, I'm creating a brand. Mm-hmm. That's like, like everybody does, right? Mm-hmm. So I tell them, you got to be humble. You got to be willing to just eat crow. Somebody's going to be a, a, a what's the correct term to, without being offensive? Um, you know, a, ni- a not nice person. Yes. If someone's being a not nice person on set. You know, you have to choose your battles wisely. You know, you can't go out there. So he was on a job that I wasn't on. And this guy was a combat veteran, right? Okay. And he was on a job that I wasn't on. He called me on the phone. He was like, hey, he's. <laughs> You know, I, I wanted to talk to you. I had a little problem the other day on set. I was like, what happened? He said, well, I was on set, and the second AD, they wanted to change the actress's wardrobe. They wanted to put her in a different shirt. They wanted a red shirt, but, and she had on a blue shirt. So they told me to go back to base camp. And when you're on location, sometimes it could be a three-minute drive to base camp, to the trailers. Uh-huh. Go back and get the other shirt. So we have Teamsters who drive the vans, and that's their gig in their union. So he jumped in a van with the Teamster, went back to base camp, got the shirt, and he 
the Teamster went to the restroom or something. When the Teamster came back, he said, I got to go back to set. I'm waiting for this. And the Teamster was like, well, I'm not going to set. I'm going to parking, crew parking. He says, no, but they're waiting for this. They're not, they're not shooting because they need this. Right. And, he was, and the guy was like, don't tell me how to do my job. Some the old teamster. veteran. Some, you know, I'm not even going to put age on him, but some just not a nice guy. Weathered. Aww. And went off on him. <laughs> went off. Really? You don't tell me how to do my bleep job, my bleep, 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 you know. Right. But who are you? Blah, 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 blah. And he just said, look, sir, you don't need to speak to me like that. You don't need to curse at me like that. And there were other people there witnessing this. Mm-hmm. You know? okay. And the guy... You know, continued to give him a hard time. Finally, brought him back to set. I think he went to crew parking first, and then brought him back to set. Wow. So the second AD was like, "What took you so long?" And he said, "I had a problem." He told the second AD on that job, right? And the second AD knew his background, and he was like, "I guess he probably went to the guy, the driver, and told him like this guy's a veteran. Right? He, he served three tours. Mm. You know, he blah 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 blah. And you, you know, you had no right to speak to him that way. So the next day, the guy was like." I just wanted to apologize for, okay. you know. So, that, and I was, I said, no, you did the right thing. Totally. I was like, what, you had nothing to be sorry for? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I would have wanted you to do. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, you did the right thing. You didn't overreact. You asked the man not to speak to you that way. Mm-hmm. You moved on with it. And, you, you know, we're not saving lives making a film. Mm-hmm. We can't take it that seriously. Right. You, you know, you can't let it get that, that crazy. That's one. Another one is, um, just like I had a guy, you know, it made made me really happy he called me up one of the first guys that we taught and he called me up and he was like hey can I put you down as a reference I'm getting my first apartment oh, since wow. I got out of the side because some of these guys aren't even living it they're living in transitional housing mm-hmm, yeah. that the VA provides you know and that just made me right. feel like I was you know I was doing something for that dude that you meant did. something and you know he called me. we've had conversations with me and that dude where he'll have breakdowns sometimes. And I'm right. not a therapist, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a trained therapist. I'll be the first to tell him. But I'll talk to him as an older person or as a more experienced person in mm-hmm. some ways. And he's, you know, he really appreciates it. And I appreciate it. It's great. I have loved. I love the film industry. And the one sad, the one drawback I've had in my whole, the last 30 years has been, this is great, but I'm just selling cars. I'm just right. selling beer. Mm-hmm. I'm just selling sneakers. You know, I mean, I, I've done the occasional movie, but even that, okay, you know, I'm making a movie. I was like, I want to do something that means something right. to my to the society that I, that I, the community that I live in, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And this just came out of, like, it wasn't even like a, a brainstorm that it was like a duh, of right. course we should be doing this, right. you know? Yes. And it really has let me feel like I'm contributing to somebody's life other than my children you are yeah. you totally are and you yes, yeah. and I was gonna say, but just in general like Go even again. anytime you get a chance to give back that yeah. is your way of contributing yeah. to society it yeah. might not be as grand yeah. as you would want it to yeah. be but you're making an impact yeah. even with the numbers that you're dealing with and that's major yeah. i just did a commercial last week in la for um subaru and they were dealing with the charities they deal with and we had some some people from Meals with Wheels, and I didn't really know that much about. I've heard mm-hmm. of it, but I didn't know. But I met like six people who were clients and or delivery people from Meals with Wheels, and by the end of the day, I was like, "I'm signing up, guys." <laughs> you know, I'm, when I get back to LA, I'm signing up right. because it just that's what an easy, low impact way to affect, you know, have an effect on someone else's life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So yeah. So, so Dave, is there a way or how? Can our listeners or anyone get in contact with you or the organization? Uh, they could email setvet, setvets.film at gmail.com. Okay. That's S-E-T-S dot film at gmail or or Twitter uh, at setvets. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, you have no idea how much of a pleasure it was to have you over here. Oh, it's a pleasure for me, <laughs> to too. To you. This has been, yeah, it's been great. And yeah. I love sharing about the project. So yeah, thank you. you do. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We got a proud brother over here. Ah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, indeed. Absolutely. We yes, support indeed. each other. Yeah, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is good. So, did you guys hear something happening tomorrow? Oh, yes, yeah. the solar eclipse. Mm-hmm. A 38 year wait. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I've got to get ready to leave because I didn't got my I didn't buy my glasses. So can I go to like a Seven Eleven or I, I don't Home think Depot, you want to do. Uh, I would trust Home Depot. 
I <laughs> wouldn't trust Seven right. Eleven. No, you gotta Doc, be very, you gotta, very you gotta careful. roll with it, Doc. You gotta roll with. She's just like. Well, you really? know what? I, no, I saw something where they were talking about if you cross your hands a certain way, you'll mm. go blind. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what the article said. Uh-huh. But definitely, do not look at it and unless it's a right. full eclipse. But we're not going to be in the area for the full eclipse. No. no. no so no. I think we should have headed to Char- um to uh, Charleston. Yeah, Charleston. Yeah. Charleston would have been nice. Mm-hmm. Talk to my boss and see if he can let me, you know, get out of here. <laughs> I give you permission at the talent. Oh, uh, the talent right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> awesome. Oh my goodness! So I guess the best way to watch tomorrow's eclipse is go to eclipse twenty seventeen dot nasa dot gov. That makes sense. Or if if you're off from work, you can go to the Cradle of Aviation. Right. There's there's places all across the nation. I think yep. some of the libraries on yes. Long Island. Yes. Um, along with that, we put up an article today on Late Night Parents on, you know, I guess best practices just in case if your children are interested in right. it. I mean, like I said, the video itself is going to be available on YouTube. Yep. It's going to be live streamed everywhere. Yep. Um, I think there's about 10 states... 10 to 14 states that... Full eclipse. Full straight eclipse. Across, straight across the United States. So, now, do you remember the last one? I, I do know that I, know you, you I, were tweeted, I, I, I tweeted out, it was 38 years ago. <laughs> I know that much. I remember. <laughs> you said you remember I remember, it? sure. I was plenty old enough to remember the eclipse. <laughs> I don't right. remember that. Yeah, I do. I, don't. I yeah. sure don't. No, I think I'm, I might go ahead and make one of those pinhole eclipse viewers and ah, okay. talk to our facilities director and say, "All right, let me get up on the roof and go up there and watch it because we should be able to see it in the city." Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm sure. Like I said, um, on the NASA website, I believe at 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the, the eclipse pre- preview show starts. Yep. Hosted out of Charleston, South Carolina, 1 p.m. Uh, the solar eclipse through the eyes of NASA, and the show will cover the path of the totality of the eclipse that will take across the United States, from Oregon to South Carolina. Yep. And the program will uh, feature views from NASA's research uh, aircraft, high-altitude balloons, satellites, and specially modified telescopes. Yeah, don't even look at it through a camera. No. Don't what try, about doing my iPhone? Ray Bans. No, they said the camera, nope. the phone. Nope. Don't nothing. do it. Don't look. Okay. Don't, nothing direct. All right. So. Save your eyes. Watch it on TV. So after this, when is the next eclipse? Do we have to wait another 38 years? I don't know. More than that. I think it's like 90 okay. something yeah. years. Oh, so, yeah. so we'll be it. doing this show <laughs> and we'll be talking about the next one. Exactly. <laughs> Man. Oh, my goodness. You know, they say you can see the shadow ra- racing at you at 4,000 miles an hour when you're out in the wow. wind. Yeah, you can really? see it. That's pretty cool. If you're right in the middle of it. Nice. I guess one unrelated item. Uh-oh. Did you guys see Defenders? I did not. It was just released on not. Netflix. Did you see it? I did see it. I was going to say, of course you know. <laughs> you know. So what, what is your opinion? Opinion is it's not the Avengers. Well, do you mean that in a good way or a bad way? I mean that in a good way. Okay. I mean that in a good way. Um, I binged it Friday Friday night. Okay. Hmm. I binged it Friday night. It was eight episodes. Oh, some wow. Of the, some of the episodes Sick. were like 45 minutes. Okay. So I watched them Friday morning mm-hmm. and then Friday evening. So it was a quick series. Though. Friday morning. You were off this week? No, I oh. went to work. Okay. See, some of us were working. <laughs> <laughs> Others of us were upstairs in their was, office in the Tower there. of Power. <laughs> just, Stop. you know. Why somebody it. only has like a hundred <laughs> steps. Stop. Oh. I was watching Ozark. I was watching yes, Ozark. Yes, okay. So I've only gotten three episodes in, but okay. that's one heck of a show. Dr. Michelle, you binging anything right now? Binge watching anything? The last thing I watched was Power. Okay. All right. Really good episode. One more left. Yes. For the season? Yes. Very good. Okay. Yes. After 
I guess next week we can talk about it because it'll actually be over. Okay. Yes. I have I've only watched one episode of Power ever. So. Oh, okay. Oh. Very very good. I like it. I what I saw was fine, but I just you know have other things I'm watching. So, <laughs> what about Dave? What are you binge watching? What, what are you binging? <sighs> well, you know, right now I find myself every five or six years I redo The Wire. So I'm oh, I like the <laughs> wire. So I'm currently doing okay. the wire again. I haven't yes. done it in about three or four years. Avon and Barksdale. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I like the wire. Stringer and Avon. <laughs> Listen, I, w- I was in, I was doing a job about two two three years ago. I was in Barcelona, and when I tra- when I work overseas, they have a, a another AD who's local who works with me. So he's my right hand man. So the, the the Spanish AD, we were talking, and I was like, "Have you been to the states?" He says, "Yeah, yeah." I said, where'd you go? He says, I went to L.A., went to New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Washington, Baltimore. And I was like, Baltimore? Like, why did you visit Baltimore? He, he looks at me and he goes, The Wire, man. The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the like, wire. God, man, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, so. Uh, big shout out to our friends at WSCR Digital Radio in Baltimore, Maryland that play the show. Nice. Welcome so, to WSCR. Yep. Yeah. So I guess along with that, we're getting ready to close this out. Dave, want to definitely thank you for coming through here. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, please. Thank you. Well, uh, you sound like you're a busy man, so I don't know when we can see uh, you again. Uh, maybe he can call in. six months or so. Rumors, you know, rumors. <laughs> maybe he can call in. Oh, yeah, can well, we can take in. another road trip. Ah, uh, uh, there you go. Come out to L.A. I really do want to. Uh-huh. And as the talent, Come I'm putting win- my foot down. <laughs> Come, in <the> Come <laughs> in the winter. We never should have started that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, best ways to get in contact with each other, Dr. Michelle, best ways to get in contact with you? The best way is you can go to fitdoc.com or on Instagram, ask A-S-K-D-R Michelle with one L. Every time they always give me a hard time. You cannot <laughs> see them, but they are like silently mimicking me. And on Facebook, Dr. Michelle with one L, middle initial C, and last name R-E-E-D. And... The phone numbers to the The phone number for the office is 516-794-2200, extension 8. And we are a family practice office, so we take care of the entire family. So looking forward to hearing from you. And don't forget to get my book. That's an Amazon number one seller. Mentally Fit, Physically Strong, The Fit Doc's Guide to Real Life, Real Fitness, Real Health. There you go. Rich? Richie V? Just embracing the brand, as Ted says, <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> Late Night Rich. I am the real Ted Hicks. And as I said before, really appreciated having Dave in the studio with us. Yep. Don't be a stranger. Next time I'll be here for sure. All right, you guys.